We are back on Morning Line. Nick Bear is here with Starlit May. Oh, oh. She goes by Star. Yeah, I do. It's nice. <laughs> you don't get nervous on TV, really, do you? I mean, you're mellow. You're relaxed right yeah. now. Yeah. You know why? Because you're talking about something you love. Food. Yes, exactly. That's why. She's the chef at Anzi Blue. We're taking some of your calls, questions, if you'd like. Uh, she um, is an amazing chef, and we're talking about, as well, her cookbook and some of the recipes. Maybe you have one, a question or not. We have Mary, who wanted to talk to you. So, Mary, good ah, morning. Hey, Hi, Mary. Mary. Hey. Hey. Uh, look, good morning. Good morning, morning to you. I, I need to ask the, the chef, does she know where I can get some cast iron skillet burnt to get the grease out the, off of the bottom of oh. oh, meaning that if you've already cooked them, you've used them so often that the, the grease is built up on the bottom of the skillet? Yes, yes. I got the yes. same problem on this old one. I don't know if you know the answer to that, but is that a common thing that it is. with time, what happens? I, it's just the oxidation of cooking it f over years and years and years. So, like, the, the it'll get down on the bottom. and yeah, then She's talking about on the outside of the yeah, pan. Yeah, right. and then it cooks. It'd be that one little spillage. She wiped it off. Yeah. But some of the protein still stays. So yeah, it's a, it gets kind of craggy, and mm -hmm. it's all round. It's a, it's a protein buildup. Okay, and now, is that a problem? No, that's when the pan get good. Okay, see, that's what I was going to say. Because, I, listen, I, Mary, I got the same thing, where it builds up. Now, the bottom's not so bad, but on the edges. On the corners. And it's, it's just as you said, it gets harder. And if you, you know, when you bought it, it was smooth, and now you rub your hands, you can feel it's kind of crumb. Bumpy. I suppose you could, you know, take a chisel. And, but you don't want to do that with your cast right. iron pan. Now it's just good, because go. yeah. when you get that, on, when it gets to that temperature, that is what's holding it in there. Yeah. Yeah. It's giving you everything you need. Yeah, and maybe, yeah. so it, it's even more insulation yeah. maintaining it. So Mary, yeah, don't do that. I mean, maybe something where you're thinking aesthetically it doesn't look as nice, and that's what's so interesting about it. You could lay two pans, a bright spanking new one, cast iron here, that just right out of the factory, and one that's been used for 40 years by someone. And you're looking at the two of them, you're like, oh, person who doesn't know any better is going to take that new fancy one right. and leave this old beat up one. Yeah, and that beat up one's going to give you the better product. Oh my gosh, yeah. So if you've got one that's got that much buildup, Mary, unless it's getting in the way of the Let's food Let's trade, somehow, Mary. Bring yeah, it to me. Yeah, you <laughs> bring it. Just leave it be. <laughs> I think I'm glad you called on that. Yeah, it's not a problem. It's actually good for the yeah. pan. It's like yeah. seasoning. Yeah, seasoning. Even yeah. though it's on the outside. That's literally what it is. Protein. Yeah, it's pro that's all it is. Yeah, it's burned on inside. Lovely. Okay, let's go to uh, Linda. Linda, hi. Good morning, Linda. Good morning. I was wondering when she um, was going to ever mention pot liquor uh, <laughs> down in the awesome. where we lived uh, down in southern Mississippi. Uh, we would save any of the pot liquor and put it in a jar, and I still do, and put it in the refrigerator. And you get the hankering for a little bit of turnip greens, and you drink some pot liquor. That's it. So you literally you drink it cold out of the jar, like you're drinking, you know, an iced tea. Yeah, just, I mean, I just pour a little bit out and then drink the pot liquor. You, yeah. think, you think you're drinking turnip greens. Yeah. I love it. I, I will do that. I think that's I think that's great. I mean, and it's as nutritious as can be. Yeah. Have you ever heard of right. that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think that is, <laughs> that is so cool. All right. Pot liquor goes yeah, in there. It'll hold yeah, it in the fridge. Yeah, because you got to think about it. You know, back in the day when it was like the depression or whatever the case may be, it was very hard to make sure that children ate every day. Yeah. So that's when those kind of practices began. You don't want to waste anything. You don't want to waste now, I anything. I would think, though, if you've, if you've cooked the greens in... Um, bacon fat, ham fat or something like that. Once you get the pot liquor, if you put it in the fridge, won't the fat and the uh, the, the water separate a bit as it cools? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. And then I guess you could mix it up or you could scoop the fat off, but that's part of the flavor. What, what, what would you do? I don't know. I mean, it would separate, wouldn't it? If it's in the fridge, yeah, I don't know if hers did. Yeah, I mean, it, it, should, it should separate and then being the girl that I am, I will take that and use it again. You would use the... The, <laughs> the, fat, the fat again, yeah. Do you ever cook with lard? Yeah. All right, so it's... Can, I guess... Let's make the best biscuits. I know. All right, talk... Yeah, you're right. The right. best biscuits. The lard. I mean, because you don't see it as often in the grocery, but if you look in the right... Most groceries, I guess, sell it. It's mm -hmm. usually refrigerated, I guess. Um, so the best... So lard instead of Crisco or something like that. Mm-hmm. All right, and so what's your favorite type of biscuit? What kind? I mean, you have pictures uh, of. Good old country drop biscuit is my favorite. Okay, now that's an art because, like I said, my 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 mother, not my mother, my in-law, my sister-in-law, can just do it, and she throws them, and I'll get the recipe, try to make them at home, and they come out like rocks. Oh, 
Yeah. All right, so a drop biscuit. Can you just make one without a recipe looking? Just You just do it and you can yeah. look and know how much. I just, yeah, I, I wing it. My grandmother taught me um, size, um, <laughs> sizes with my fingers, so that would be a teaspoon. Okay. And this would be a tablespoon, and it's a tablespoon and a half, and then this would be a half a cup. Okay. This is a full cup. So that's how I was taught. Yeah. You know, and then not till I went to school and started knowing all this other stuff. Like, I'm like, she was very classically trained and had no idea. Oh. She made the most beautiful bechamel <clears throat> sauce for macaroni and cheese. Right. But I didn't know it was the bechamel. I was just like, oh, she, mama, grandmama used flour when she make hers. So you found out later just how good it was. Yeah. Now, what they learned was from trial and error and from mm -hmm. learning from other people. Right. So what, what and, and that's a great way to learn. And there are chefs who make careers that maybe never were classically trained. You said you went and got a certificate. What did you do? when you decided, I want to become a chef, I, I maybe should go get some formal training. Right. And what did you get from that that complemented what you already knew? Uh, basically, they just taught me the, f the proper names for the food I already cook. <laughs> so now it's easier for me to slide into that fine dining type of area because they won't be like, yeah, I know how to make that sauce. What is it called? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. they want to know what it is. But were there certain things that you learned technique-wise that maybe you didn't know that helped with some of your oh, classes yeah. and the training you already had? Oh, yeah. But I like, learned how to build some classics, like classic sauces at school that I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have gotten the yeah. opportunity to learn being from a small town in Alabama. Right. So, yeah, I did get to learn quite a bit of things, and now I'm like... Huh, take a little bit of this, put it right. with a little bit of this. That sounds good. Now, the trick of, <laughs> the trick of making a good sauce. Yeah. All right. Like um, Patience. Patience. And if it involves egg or something, I, there's this egg lemon sauce I would make when I do dalmadas, which is a Greek, you know, grape leaf. Yeah. And every time I try to make it, it curdles. Oh. Okay, the sauce. My grandma could do it with her eyes closed, and it would be perfect and creamy, yellow and lemony. I can't do it. The trick to making sauces... And, and there's different kinds. Uh, what are some of the more different types of sauces you use? I mean, yeah. it's just... Well, we don't use a whole a whole lot of different sauces at Izzy Blue. Yeah. Like, that Lafitte sauce is probably like... What is that again? The most, That's the one that goes on... The, the shrimp and grits. Shrimp and grits. Yeah. yeah, so we we build that one. We make a good bechamel. We just build a few things that could be... What is this here? Is that a dressing? Oh, yeah. That, we That's, make that in-house. It's a raspberry, so, white balsamic vinaigrette. For your salad. Yeah. White, white balsamic vinaigrette. Mm -hmm. It's not as tart as the dark. Okay. So, so I was about to ask you, because I love balsamic vinegar, but it's not as tart. Yeah, it's not as tart. It's got a little more sweet in the back. We also use the, uh, the honey white balsamic on our Brussels sprouts. Because, uh -huh. you know, Brussels sprouts are a little tart. Yep, they, yep, they can be. Mm -hmm. But that I love delicious. them. There's, that's a good, some feta right. cheese and bacon. Cauliflower wings, and there's a sauce there. Yes, that's like a, a, a spicy Asian sauce. Okay, and talk to me about cauliflower. I mean, you... You know, a lot of people, like, I've, I've tried cauliflower crust pizzas. I don't think you have any of those on your menu. No. I don't like them. I mean, don't tell me it's like a regular pizza crust. It ain't. It's all not. Right? It's now, not a pizza. I think I would like cauliflower wings. I, I don't think it's going to taste exactly like chicken to me. No, not at all. But I think I would like them. Yeah, they're good because the batter is what's good. Because, you well, know, we, I, I make say. that. You could fry my shoe leather in batter, and I'd love it. Ooh, yeah. Well, I'm just saying, the batter <laughs> and the frying. <laughs> now, what, for you, uh, the difference between deep frying and pan frying mm -hmm. something do you, I mean I, the deep fry I don't know is it's just way more crunchy and mm -hmm. well what do you think is the basic difference in that yeah the the deep fry is surround that heat surrounds it all, all at the way. same time right. so it's cooking it from the outside to the inside when you pan fry it's cooking from one side to the other so side. typically if you're using a cast iron pan for say a catfish fillet that's breaded would you only have maybe a quarter to a half inch of oil in there so that it's when it's heated up, yeah, you have to flip it. Mm -hmm. And is there an advantage one way or the other in your mind to that? Which would you prefer, a deep-fried catfish fillet or a pan-fried catfish fillet? I prefer deep-fried because I like the crunchy. Yeah, so do I. Okay. <laughs> what about if you cook catfish? You ever cook catfish with a head on it still, the whole thing? Uh-huh. Yeah. Now, I used to have a friend of mine who swore it tasted so much better with a head on it. Does. it. Oh, come on. Yeah. Why would that? It's just Because it's... it's Okay, it's a little okay. gross real quick. Okay. 
<laughs> so okay, good. Now, like that, the, the moisture from the inside of the face. So, you know, think of how a fish breathes and think of how moist his eyes are and think yeah. of all of that. The gills has all this extra and you cut the head off, you lose all of that. Right. When you cook it with the head on, it's just kind of like... So, and that, that imparts to the rest of the body mm -hmm. of the fish, yeah, maybe coming from there. there. Yeah. That actually is the first time that's ever been explained to me in that way, and that makes perfect sense. That oh. it actually, that's interesting. Yeah, that so it does change the flavor quite a bit. That's how, that's how my grandparents like it. They would take a whole fish, they would skin him up, and then they would make little slices in his body. Mm -hmm. And then they would drop him in there and cook him. Now, will you ever um, broil a fish or do something other than fry it? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, I like I like baked fish. I like raw fish. I like it roasted. Yeah. Like most people don't even roast fish, but it's delicious. No, and when you say roast, that would high it, temperature, I, short amount of time. Yeah, so just throw it under the broiler, mm -hmm. broiler or something like that. Yeah. And uh, ocean fish, we talked already about how for us, crappie is just amazing. What? It is. They won't let us have it. I know you can't. <laughs> Throw it in the restaurant, but it no, is but I amazing. Eat it at home. <laughs> this is so crazy. Man, I'm with you. It's yeah. just like the perfect eating fish. It's just white, perfect, and flaky. Let's go to Milton. Milton, good morning. Hi, Milton. Hey. Hi, good Milton. morning. Good morning. What's on your mind? Hey, uh, I'd like to ask Star, where did the name Angie Blue come from, and exactly where is she located? Because I've been seeing the advertisement on uh, television, and I sure want to get to her restaurant. He and I will share a table. How about that? All right. Fill him in. Anzi Blue. Yep. And, and tell him. We were going to mention it at the end of the show. But, yeah, tell him where exactly okay. where you're located. Uh, Anzi Blue is located across the street from Hill, from uh, the Belcourt Theater in Hillsborough Village, 2111 Belcourt Avenue. Okay. And, and what, did you tell him the name? Oh, Anzi Blue. Okay, my business partners and her best friends, they have dogs. One dog is Anzi. One dog is Blue. <laughs> We're a dog-friendly restaurant. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, so are you serious? You're a dog-friendly restaurant? I oh, mean, yeah. So, if, okay, I've got um, a bulldog. If mm -hmm. I wanted to bring the bulldog with. We have a patio. You have a patio? So we feed dogs? the dogs. Yeah, we give them little treats. Oh, my bulldog. We're dog people. love that. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. I, that's another great reason to mm -hmm. go there. I have a dog myself. What, what are your hours? Do you know? Um, yeah, well, we're open you know. um, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day. We do breakfast, brunch, and lunch all day. You can order anything on the menu all day. All day long. Okay. Uh -huh. so, 8 o'clock, so. if you want a hamburger, order it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, uh, yeah, 8 o'clock in the morning for yeah. breakfast. And you have uh, waffles and chicken, mm. chicken and waffles? Well, chicken and waffles is like one of my number one sellers. It's uh, actually shrimp and grits is number one. Chicken and waffles is number two. Okay, which is very, and again, I'm sure you put your own spin on it. That or something chicken like. is crunchy. It's got to be crunchy. Yeah. 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 Crunch is everything. It's all about I'm the so crunch. Right. It's yeah. crunch. Whatever I'm eating, it needs to be crunchy. You, you know. I want to know I'm eating it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I think as much as flavor is important, um, texture, uh, aesthetics are important, but if something doesn't look well, good to me, just appearance-wise, but it's well-prepared and tastes good, I can get past it. Yeah. But texture to me is almost as important as flavor. That's almost. true. Almost. Mm -hmm. Just what it feels like in your mouth and the crunch. Mm -hmm. even Because it's about know. the experience. Yeah. And you need all of that to get the experience. So true. We'll take a break. We'll come back. Our final segment, we can take more calls, talk more about some of these, like this gargantuan chicken sandwich. I don't even know how one person eats that whole thing. That's huge. They rarely do. Okay, we'll be back <laughs> right after this. All right. Do you